Hey guys, it's George. Welcome to my Bias Trackers episode of BTS Iconic Fashion Moments, J-Hope. This was so hard. I can't even tell you. I found Jimin's episode, my BTS bias, so, so insanely difficult, but I found J-Hope's episode even harder. Like, ranking these looks, pushing ones out, deciding what's an honorable mention and not in the main 15, like, Oh my fuck! I was meant to film this a week ago, but I just couldn't rank the looks. So I had to push filming out by a week. So that, that explains it to you. J-Hope initially wasn't a bias tracker for me. He crept on in there and his fashion, I remember doing his airport fashion, I was literally like, love the very unique sense of style. But from then, what, like three years ago now, his style has really grown and grown and grown on me and it's probably my favourite out of BTS. Over Jimin, my bias. If you are a regular viewer of this series, thank you so, so much for your support. If you are new here, let me explain how this works. I've got 15 of J-Hope's most iconic looks, in my opinion, and some honorable mentions, and I ranked them from 15 down to his most iconic moment, again, in my opinion, and I'm gonna take you through them and then finish with our honorable mentions. So grab a drink, grab a snack, get comfy, and let's jump in to 15th place. <laughs> In 15th place, we have this solo stage look from the Speak Yourself finale in Seoul, October 2019. Can you believe I'm putting an all red look in the 15th spot? That's how hard it was to rank. Red three-piece suit, this boxy oversized cut, the wide leg trouser. It's very contemporary menswear, it's very chic, and I love the waistcoat underneath because it's very angular. The sharp angle of the break coming in, double breasted six button in a triangular placement, which keeps the design of the suit very contemporary. And then that angle back across at the quarter. Those sharp angles really contrast against the boxy cut of the jacket and then the wide leg trouser. So it works beautifully, then finished with the gold chains, the glasses. It's an impactful look and there is styling to it that really accentuates those key design features of the suit. That's me <laughs> just shrading the angles of the suit. I can't believe I've put an all right look in 15th, but these looks, these looks, this is gonna be a fight episode. I'll tell you that now. I'll tell you that for free. <laughs> In my 14th, we have J-Hope at Lollapalooza in 2022. This all black moment. Let's just call a spade a spade. This outfit is fucking hot. He looks fine as fuck. The wavy, messy hair. That oversized black t-shirt with the sleeves that are coming down just to the elbow. A very boxy streetwear cut. We've then got the wide leg Louis Vuitton combat trousers. You can see the monogram in the combat trouser, just the texture of it. You can see me dribbling over <laughs> the combat pants. And then how it's been styled with the gloves. In 2022, gloves were a big thing within K-pop male idols. We saw a lot of styling with gloves. Straight away, 17 Hot comes to mind. I like how this has ever been finished with that black necklace. That's quite wide around the neck, mimicking the neckline of the t-shirt. It adds a nice texture. And then just the texture is hell. Like, this look is fine. Look! I'm obviously very excited. I just filmed two episodes of my new series that's coming. The slash might have started by the time this goes live. So I'm like very like hyped up and like. <laughs> and now we're talking about my BTS by checker who is sexy as fuck and has great style. Like what a great Tuesday for me. In 
In my 13th spot, we have the Louis Vuitton bag campaign from 2023. I just love everything about this. We're getting these incredible monotone looks. And then just the way the campaign's been shot with the movement, especially in this image here, in this minky grey suit, how it really accentuates the tie at the waist, the fabric flinging out, the leg kicking around, the blur, the bag. I just love how this has been shot. It's incredible photography. Hobie looks unreal, like come through model. The all navy look with the navy bag, the navy monogram, and just where you're getting the plain navy look, and then the monogram in those two blue tones, how the Louis Vuitton monogram really lifts and stands out from the image because of that styling. Again, you can see it snatched at the waist, the wide leg coming over the shoe. It's pretty much the same silhouette in all of the looks, apart from the red. But it just works so well with the movement. Because the suit is gonna move with him and it's gonna get captured. The red look, we're getting a very wide leg pan with a coat that has been worn open. That's how the silhouette's slightly different. But again, we're getting the movement. It's like an emergency break. <laughs> but save the bag, <laughs> that's what the pose gives me. These looks you just can't go wrong, like incredible tailoring, a classic Louis Vuitton keeple bag, monotone, like you're speaking like three things that I love. Tailoring, a good accessory, tonal. <laughs> Coming in 12th, we have Blood, Sweat and Tears and this look from M Countdown. And this is from October 2016. I just love to see the difference in style from 2016 up to like his present day looks. I find it nostalgic. I remember these scoop waistcoats so well. The slim cut tailoring. It was the look, like tailoring that is so, so slim. It looks like the trousers are gonna rip. And then these scoop waistcoats. I remember it well. I love the combination of the printed floral blazer and how the colours in the print tie into the colour of his hair. It works beautifully together. We're then getting the pussy bow tie shirt. And then we're getting the cuffs peeking through. And then the black tailoring underneath that scoop waistcoat the skinny trousers, it grounds everything. It ties into that grounding color of the print. So the print jumps, the hair color jumps, the detail of the shirt, and then that slim cut silhouette underneath. It's a great look and it's very true to the times. I love this. <laughs> It would not be a J-Hope fashion video without talking about his airport fashion. He has some of my favourite airport moments ever. So in spot number 11, we're going to speak about some of my favourite airport moments. The first is this look here. And I remember doing my J-Hope airport video three years ago, talking about how much I love this look. The print clash of that like lumberjack style jacket, the print underneath the horizontal stripes with the red tying into the jacket but completely contrasting the straight to wide leg denim with the giant turnbacks tying into the Balenciaga triple s tying into the colors of the jacket the gucci bag the monogram stands out but the colors tie in this look had a lot going on but i loved how it all came together and you guys were like this was like a punishment for losing something in a run bts episode and here i am talking about how much i love the look i stand by it i still love this look regardless whether it's punishment or not this airport moment obviously going to be included when bts were flying to la in 2021 and this was part of their louis vuitton brand ambassadorship and j-hope came out with the duck bag I was so obsessed with this bag, I thought it was so fun. The rest of the outfit is quite chic and minimalist. The blazer, the relaxed silhouette of the trouser, the black beanie. We're getting some colour through the scarf and the top board underneath, but most of the outfit is fairly plain and fairly sleek in cut. And then you get this fucking ridiculous Louis Vuitton duck bag in the classic Louis Vuitton monogram. I just love it because it's so 
silly and fun, but it's chic. It fits with the outfit. Like, I still want to know if this duck bag has a name. If I owned this bag, I would have named it. I name all of my bags, but <laughs> specifically this one. So name the duck bag in the comments. Give me a name and leave me a duck emoji. Like that's, that's what I want you guys to do in this video. And of course we have to speak about this infamous airport look here. The denim jacket covered in the stars going down the sleeves. Nothing underneath shirtless. And then the gray sweatpants shorts, the beanie over the face. This look is infamous for being like barely there, do you know? He's not wearing a top under his jacket. We've got the grey like sweatpants shorts. We all <laughs> know what a grey sweatpant means. There's just like a I don't give a fuck attitude about this look. It just looks hot. Like he looks hot. Like I just love the I don't give a fuck attitude. It's rock star vibes. Do you know what I mean? Like there's just something attitude and energy about this look that makes it iconic. <laughs> Coming into my 10th spot, we have the looks from Chicken Noodle Soup, which came out in September 2019. This music video was wild. I mean, it's, you know, still around, it is wild. But it's such a good time, and the fashion truly reflects that. We're getting lots of fun streetwear in these relaxed silhouettes, lots of colour coming through. At the start of the music video, we're getting the look with the cargo pants that has all of the elastic loops in the different colours, which tie perfectly into that white t-shirt with that colourful graphic, the colourful cardigan. I like how we're getting shots with the cardigan on, the cardigan off, because it gives us a point of difference and you can see how the whole outfit comes together. And then the look closing the MV, everything's just so intensified, like we're getting this big performance scene. The colours from the first look have just been so intensified in this tracksuit moment. The black grounding that crazy like acid rainstorm lightning print. The pinks, the purples, the greens, it's so acidic. You can almost taste how sour this outfit is. It's so in your face. I like the fact they've styled it underneath with that plain black jersey t-shirt and then the necklaces. I do not like the headband. I do not like how his hair is styled. His hair should not be styled like this. Um, but I love the outfit and how it's been finished with the orange converse. I love the colors and how it's, you know, the doll's been amped up for the finale of the music video, so. And the song's iconic, the music video's iconic, like it's just an iconic moment in his career and also fashionably. <laughs> Obviously, the Dior stage look from the Speak Yourself tour in 2019, specifically outro tier, is going to make it into this video. How sexy does he look in this outfit? Like, how hot does he look in this outfit? All black, the utilitarian vibes. Dior et moi on the t-shirt, the harness giving us the military utilitarian vibes. The combat trouser, which you'll notice is in a more slim cut compared to what you would see now. Tr like honestly, the 2010s was all about like a slim cut. It's when we come towards the end, we started to see it widening out, but way, way slimmer than what we would see now. The boot, the leather gloves, his hair, like everything about this look is just perfect. There's a level of fashion utilitarianism. It's like a level of sex appeal. Dior et moi, like... <sighs> and because I'm cheeky and we're on the subject of Dior, I'm just gonna slide this in as like a 9B. Hobie attending the Dior show, Fall Winter 23, I was obsessed with this all grey look. I love the texture of the fabric. The skirt piece that wraps around half of the trouser in those knife pleats. Knife pleats are pleats that run in all the same direction. And then the cuffs on the top is creating volume and it's creating these lines that are similar to the knife pleats. 
The only thing I questioned with this look was the shoes. It's giving moon boots slash I just broke my ankle vibes and I wasn't fucking with them. But the outfit, the chain, the sunglasses, the attitude, this was a moment. So, you know, I just need to uh, slip this one in there. <laughs> In my eighth spot, we have the Me, Myself and J-Hope All New Hope Photo Folio. These images are unreal. Let's kick it off with this one here. My guy looks so fucking fine. It looks like an AI image. And then this outfit, I am in love. For me, it's that thick waist belt snatching the waist. You guys, my regular viewers, you know how I feel about snatch waist. I live for it. So. This black trench coat on top of that black mock neck. A mock neck is when a piece of knitwear or jersey just comes up in a single layer up the neck. When it's a roll neck, a turtle neck, it falls back down. Mock neck, the heavy silver tying into the silver hardware on the trench coat. I can't tell what type of hardware it is, but you can see that it creates this panelled vibe to the coat, it's such an insane detail. And then the thick waist belt in that high shine leather, the zips, the studs, the buckles, it's so fucking fine. And I love the fact he's got dark hair in this as well. I think if he had light hair, it would really contrast and play off the outfit. But the fact that his hair is black, it just gives it this edge. I'm and then on the complete other end of the spectrum, we're getting this all white, very soft, dreamy, ethereal vibe. The long lavender blonde hair, the light sky shot between the white flowers tying into the all white outfit, the sheer shirt with the opaque bib. There's enough the lines of the bod, but nothing, nothing really out on show. And you can see that there's volume to the sleeves and then we're getting a trouser that sits right at the waist. The textures are very soft and light in contrast to our first image where it was tough, rigid, hard. And then the final image is giving me lava, it's giving me on fire, the colours of Eva. It's giving me more of like a sun, rise vibe than a sunset but it looks like something out of a fantasy film like that is how ridiculous this picture is and then the outfit the high shine black assuming vinyl pvc the way it reflects the light the red tones it just enhances the image the coat to the floor the high shine trousers, the zips, the heavy necklace, the studded boots. It's giving me Matrix. It's giving me like BTS Matrix collaboration. And that's something I want to see. Like really bad. <laughs> In my seventh spot, we're at the Melon Music Awards 2020 for BTS's performance of Dynamite. This velvet suit. This purple velvet suit fuck me that's all i'm gonna say let's move on to six no <laughs> joking i think i did a stage outfit video for the dynamite era and you guys were popping off or it might have been another video i don't know but you guys were popping off in the comments that i didn't talk about hobie in the velvet suit and i'll admit i completely missed that but in this video here we're gonna honour this look. His hair like this, with like the strand coming down, it's just one of my faves for him. It really highlights the like, structure of his face. It gives like that sexy, mysterious vibe. But the suit, this double-breasted, four-button, peak lapel, velvet jacket, cropped, styled shirtless, just a very simple chain. And then the purple trouser, the slight flare, the monk shoe, it's, so sleek, but that wide peak lapel, the purple velvet really ties in to the Dynamite era. And the Dynamite era in terms of styling is just one of my favorite for them. It was such a strong aesthetic the entire time, every member, it was such a vibe. How did I miss this? Like how did I miss this? 
in that video, I would like to go back in time and punch myself. <laughs> Coming in sixth, we're at the Permission to Dance Las Vegas show, specifically the outfit for On. The all white moment, the jumpsuit, the sunglasses. I remember doing my stage outfit video for this. That then got blocked. Thank you so much, Hybe. I was frothing at the mouth for this outfit. I love the fact that we got this all white set, but his look was so futuristic with the jumpsuit, the styling of it those incredible wrap sunglasses that have the translucent frame, the translucent vibe to the lenses, very futuristic. And then the white jumpsuit with all of the hardware snatched at the waist, all of the chains. It just was levels beyond the other members' outfits. I'm sorry, that's my, opi my opinion with this one. In no one else's episode of this series have I included a look from this set and this just, just floored me. I believe this jumpsuit was Rick Owens, I'll confirm it on screen, but I remember, I think I remember it being with Rick Owens. Entering the top five, in fifth place, we have Hobie at the 2022 Mama. I feel like I'm giving a similar kind of vibe of my top, like if I just, you know, like got rid of this. Oh, ah. <laughs> like if I put a blazer and some sunglasses on. Inspired. I was floored by this look. It's very simple, but it's very sexy. The way the silk top underneath is wrapping gives an incredible line. We're getting the bare chest, the blazer, the strong shoulders, the wide peak lapel, tying into that dynamite era. Satin contrast against the rest. And then he's got the tuxedo trousers on with the satin side stripe. For me, these pieces are giving you very classic men's event wear, but the way it's been styled with that shirt, very drapey, the bare chest the way the blazers roll back. There's a casualness to it, a effortless vibe to it, which just really leans into the sexiness of it. It's just a vibe. The sunglasses finish it. I think it wouldn't have the same overall like energy and attitude if we took those sunglasses away. <laughs> In fourth place for me, it has to be J-Hope in the Butter MV. Obviously, we have the iconic moment at the end where he eats the butter. He eats the butter. I think as well, he said how fucking disgusting it was. He didn't use the term fucking disgusting, I'm paraphrasing. How disgusting it was. And the fact that they dyed his hair yellow to tie it into the butter concept, I lived for it but they had so many incredible black and white looks in this MV, but his is one of my favorites. The thrill collar that comes right up to the jaw in the white, contrasting against the black, and then the pearls and the chains that drape off of the collar. There's such a feminine vibe to these pieces and it looks so fucking good on him. And then he's got the bracelets that really add like heaviness and weight, a more masculine vibe to the look. And then just the only color being the orange hair. Type. Just the scene where he eats the butter, it gets me. He looks so damn fine. Almost like eating fucking butter. Whoa. And then we also have the look where BTS are like in that gold and black scene. And Hobie has the beautiful blazer. I believe it's by Bomba. What I love about this look with the wide peak lapel in that contrast satin is that for me, it has a nod back to the dynamite era, which was the era before butter, but it's just been ever so slightly reinvented with those strong shoulders that have the slight angle up. You can see that the top underneath has a metallic to it and the trousers have this subtle shine to them. So all of the textures coming together, the strong silhouette, the yellow hair in the gold and black setting, it's just a standout.
My third place, my third place has to go to this incredible Louis Vuitton suit from the men's Spring Summer 22 collection by Virgil Abloh. And this is from the GQ Korea January 2022 shoot. What I love about this suit is how it creates this silhouette within the crystals. It's so beautifully done. It gives these really interesting lines to the body. I love the hand print in the crystals on the sleeve and then how you get the ombre of crystals going back really intense and then they ombre back it's such a beautiful finish i love the styling of this as well the black shirt point collar very similar texture to the suit and then the chain the very simple chain which ties into the embellishment none of the styling takes away from the effect of the suit the suit itself is a very simple streamlined cut. The jacket looks quite slim at the waist, but more of a longer line cut coming down and hitting the top of the mid thigh. And the trousers look like a true straight cut that start right at the waist, really elongating the leg, especially with that silver line going down. It's gonna go whoop, whoop. Another detail of the suit I absolutely love is how across the back, in the star-like embellishment. It's been embroidered. Don't stare at the stars, you might see someone. Which is creepy but cute at the same time. Insane look, one of my favorites. Graphic, black, silver, like, it's no shock, really. Is that? <laughs> In my second place, we have Hobie attending the Fall Winter 23 Louis Vuitton show at Paris Fashion Week. The detail of this look, the way that they've created this print in the jacket, the shirt, the trousers is so insanely skillful. I remember when I made my TikTok about this last year, I lost my mind. I feel like there was a love or hate it kind of vibe in the comments from you guys but I think it's just so unreal. The way that they've created this face in the jacket, in the trouser, the different tonal pieces of the fabric, and then how you're getting the Louboutin monogram in different levels within those. You don't see it until you're close up, but from far away, you know, you don't get the LV, but up close, you get it. It's just so clever. And then the fit being, you know, more relaxed, slightly oversized. It's like the perfect canvas to create this on because you're not going to be distracted by a silhouette or a cut. Everything is harmonious. It comes together. Even the burgundy shoe, it's like an on-point tonal match for the burgundy in the outfit. It's tonal. Nothing is distracting you from the work of art that is this outfit. And you know, I'm gonna be cheeky again and slide a 2B in here as we're on the subject of Louis Vuitton. Of course, we have to include Hobie's Louis Vuitton Fall Winter 21 look where BTS walked for LV. I believe he picked this suit himself. I think I was watching a behind the scenes the other day actually when I was like editing another episode. I believe it was RM, no, Jens. I believe Hobie picked this suit out himself. He said he wanted to wear a fancy suit. I love the textile of this suit. How you're getting the graphic monogram that's really blown up on this navy and white. And then you get this completely contrasting texture like ripped across the middle in this lighter, more like demony, demony, denimi blue with the pink graphics on it, the red shoe, it completely contrasts, but then that icy blue ties into his icy blue hair. And I remember reacting to the show and being like, fuck, this hair color on him is iconic. So we have to slide that in there, like shh. Coming in my first place, I need to get changed before I can tell you what it is. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm giving you a clue right here as to what my most iconic J-Hope fashion moment is. Right here. <laughs> 
Yet to come Busan 2022, this outfit is just elite. Everything about this J-Hope look is elite. I remember being so obsessed. His and Sugar's look in the set were just a whole vibe, a whole energy, like a whole thing. Trust me to pick an all black look as my most iconic J-Hope look, but it, it just is. It just is. The mullet vibe we're getting with the hair, with the bleached pieces, the black and white in the hair, how it then ties into the black and white of the outfit, the different textures, the graphics, the accessories, everything hits the nail on the head with this look. The misbehave top underneath, his is a slightly different design from mine. I've not worn this for so long. Honestly, I'm like, <laughs> I'm used to wearing loose things now. I'm like, oh my God. Um, <laughs> the misbehaved top giving us the graphic element to this look. These tops create really beautiful lines to the body and that's no different here on J-Hope. We've then got that leather vest over the top, the double zips, the hardware, the shine of the leather against the graphic and then the mat of the trouser. And then you notice on the trouser that they're sitting right at the waist. They've got that exposed zip on the fly. So the fly is tying into the hardware of the jacket. We've then got the belt, the metal hardware tying into that thick necklace. I remember these pants as well being like a nice wide cut. So it really works beautifully with the tighter half on the top half of the outfit. Even the wraparound sunglasses is just a fucking vibe. If you've been with me, all the way to the honorable mentions, please leave me three black hearts in the comments. I see you. Let's jump into our honorable mentions. I have five. <laughs> Hobie in the DNA era with this insane rainbow Gucci jumper. Gucci definitely had this phase where everything was just like everything in the kitchen sink. And that's what we're getting with this jumper here the incredible stripes going across, the tiger. We saw a lot of tigers within this era for Gucci. The tiger across the chest, the gold leaves over the shoulders. There's a lot going on with this knit, but it's such an iconic moment. Next, we have the condom shirt. Yes, you heard me correctly, condom shirt. When Hobie went to Hawaii on a family holiday in December, 2021, wearing a shirt with condoms all over it on a family holiday is definitely a choice and I love it. I'm, I'm here for it. Of course, we have to speak about the permission to dance black swan look, the sleek tailoring with that sheer knitted top underneath, just giving us like a little peek, a little tease. I love looks like this where you get different levels of sheer it reveals like a little something, there's like a little sexiness to it, you know? Like it speaks my language, so no shock it's here. We need to include Hobie's outfit of the day Instagram posts here in this section because that was a whole moment. We were all waiting for his next outfit of the day. I loved how he took a Polaroid picture of the outfit, like flat laid out, and then we got pictures of him wearing it out and about, and his outfits were always on point, this incredible, chic, casual, streetwear vibe, luxury. It was such a moment, I hope he brings it back. <laughs> I actually have six, I counted that so wrong. It's the end of my day. It's the end of my day, it's, it's night time. <laughs> Pied Piper, Pied Piper just cause. This set of looks has to be one of my favorite BTS group set of looks the galaxy vibes, the different embellishments and crystals on stage that really light up these looks. Hobie's is one of my favorites, like V's has to be my favorite hands down, but this was a moment, it shines just as bright as the others. We're getting these light flares going across his silk shirt and it just has to be mentioned. And my final honorable mention, has to be the Grammys 2020. I believe they were dressed by Bottega. Bottega or Celine for this red carpet. I'll confirm it on screen. But I just love the styling. The white shirt, buttoned down. 
the collar styled over the top of the black jacket. You can see that there is a contrast leather lapel. I believe it's a notch. And then we're getting the sheer top underneath. So we're getting the different densities of fabrics. Sheer to slightly heavier, the cotton, than the heavier of the jacket. It's just so good. I love the contrast. And it's just such a nicely put together outfit. I can't believe this is our final episode of BTS Iconic Fashion Moments. I saved my bias record for last. I really had to go through it ranking this. Oh my fucking God. I've had the best time creating this series. I hope you guys have had the best time watching it. If you need to catch up on the other episodes, I'll leave the playlist linked in the description box and as well in the comments section. What you should do next is go check out RM's episode if you've not already seen it. It is a very thirsty 24 minutes. Just click here. But thank you so much for watching. A massive thank you to everyone who's subscribed and who's tuned into this series. It really does mean a lot. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. <sighs>